FMC is really known. And also make sure Thank you for joining us for this episode of AFMC TV. I'm Robin Ledbetter, and I'm here today with Rachel Sizemore. Thanks so much for joining us, Rachel. Happy to be here. And Rachel is the director in the Office of Oral Health, so it's Dr. Sizemore, correct? Yes, yes, yes. that's correct. <laughs> well, thank you again for being here. And first, I wanna talk about what Oral Cancer Awareness Month is. What does it mean? Yeah, well, <clears throat> this month is really a great time to reflect on the types of cancers that are present in the population. Um, one of the Healthy People 2030 goals that's been set forth by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is, and I quote, to increase the proportion of oral and pharyngeal cancers detected at the earliest stage. So refreshing our knowledge about the risk factors, signs and symptoms of these cancers is a great thing to do this month. It is, and, and not just for dentists. Correct. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So what can a provider look for to identify abnormal or cancerous growth in the mouth? So typically concerning lesions are going to present as red, white, or red and white. Um, but really anything that looks out of place, meaning its color or consistency is different than the texture around it on the oral mucosa, would be a good reason to refer to an oral health professional for further investigation or to an oral surgeon for biopsy. Another tip um, for medical providers is that uh, malignant oral cancers are typically found on the floor of the mouth or on the lateral tongue. So oftentimes as dentists, what we'll do is actually take a two by two square of gauze and pull the tongue out and look down both sides. If you happen to notice something on the lateral tongue, that would be a, a warning sign to send for further investigation. Interesting. Well, what are some of the risk factors for oral cancer? Well, the most well-known is probably smoking and chewing tobacco. So that's gonna be your most um, traditional way to get oral cancer uh, as we think about it. But one thing that may be lesser known is that melanoma can also present in the oral cavity. So traditional um, risk factors for melanoma, such as sun exposure, may also pre uh, present a risk to oral tissues as well. One of the most pressing risk factors for oral cancers right now is oral infection with human papillomavirus, or HPV. So this viral infection can lead to oropharyngeal cancer, which is currently the most common HPV-related cancer in Arkansas. In, in Arkansas? Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what does that affect? What does oropharyngeal or a pharyngeal cancer effect? Mm -hmm. Well, an easier way to name it may be throat cancer, <laughs> but, but um, it's important to realize that both men and women can contract HPV-related or a pharyngeal cancer, but in Arkansas, men are diagnosed four times more uh, frequently than women. And unfortunately, there's no way to really screen for HPV-related or a pharyngeal cancer. So when it's diagnosed, it's often in a more advanced stage by that time. What are the signs and symptoms? Some signs like unexplained hoarseness or sore throat without an obvious cause can be a uh, um, can point to oropharyngeal cancer, but often it's found because of a swollen lymph node. So really doing those tactile exams in the head and neck region, um, feeling for any swollen nodes is um, an important part of a preventive exam. So tell me about the HPV vaccination and why is that important for boys and girls? So because there is no screening mechanism for HPV-related oropharyngeal cancer, and there's no screening at all for men when it comes to HPV infection, prevention is really critical. And thankfully, there is a vaccine available to prevent HPV infection, which in turn effectively prevents a large percentage of HPV-related oropharyngeal cancers. The vaccine is recommended for anyone 9 to 26, but individuals can uh, be vaccinated all the way up to age 45 with shared clinical decision making. And Arkansas has some vaccination hesitancy, so why is this important? Yeah, what's important to remember is that HPV vaccination boasts what other vaccines can't at this point, and that is cancer prevention. So if we can help patients really understand and um, if they're under 18, help their parents understand the serious ramifications that can be prevented with a simple vaccination series. That'll go a long way to promoting public health and cancer prevention. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Sizemore, for joining me today. Really important information. I've learned a lot, um, not only to get my um, dental exam um, scheduled and ready to go, but to pay attention to the signs. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's it for this edition of AFMC TV. Thanks for watching and have a great day.